Now, there was a, 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 a film came out uh, earlier this year called Hunger Games. And uh, this encapsulated in so many ways the society where the global warming bollocks is supposed to take us uh, through justification. Of course, um, if you look at the, uh, the symbol of the film, it's the phoenix, the, the, uh, the firebird. For those who haven't seen it, it was a world sometime in the future of enormous, to well, total control where um, different sectors were fenced off and, and people were not allowed to go in most of the land of the country. And they were controlled from something called the Capitol, which was an elite uh, that was served by all the, the, the poor people and uh, hungry people around the country. Uh, and um, they had a games every year where two young people were, were picked from each sector who had to fight on live television uh, and the one who won was the one that stayed alive after all the others were killed. The idea was to kill all the others and, and win the game. Uh, as Dr. Richard Day said in 1969, violence, pornography and obscenity in the media and movies will be increased to desensitize people to violence and porn and make them feel life is short, precarious and brutish. And The Hunger Games was a classic, but it was more than that. Um, it was a, a symbol of the society that we're heading towards so fast. This was one of the, the elite in the capital, the, the equivalent of what people call the 1%, although, as, as I say, the real control is in far fewer than that. Um, and we have a version of the Hunger Games, and it's called Agenda 21 Sustainable Development, and it is being orchestrated outside uh, or through the United Nations and it is a stalking horse, a Trojan horse for world fascism, as I'm going to uh, go through and explain. Um, Agenda 21 was agreed at the 1992 Earth Summit in Brazil, which was headed by this guy, Maurice Strong, one of the gang big time, uh, a mate of Al Gore. And he said, Maurice Strong, this billionaire oil man, etc., he said, isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse, isn't it our responsibility to bring this about? What they are trying to do and planning to do is use saving the environment, which these buggers are destroying, um, to justify deindustrialization and uh, the end of democracy and democratic, uh, uh, you know, which is another thing I could talk about. Democ democracy and freedom, interchangeable? Don't think so. Anyway, this is the wish list in documents for Agenda 21 operating through the United Nations. An end to national sovereignty, all justified by saving the world, by the way. Uh, an end to national sovereignty. State planning and management of all land resources, ecosystems, deserts, forests, mountains, oceans and fresh water. Agriculture, rural development, biotechnology and ensuring equity equals slavery. The state is to define the role of business and financial resources. Ab abolition of private property is not sustainable, they say. Re here we go again. How many times has this come up? Restructuring the family unit. Children to be raised by the state. People told, this is what Aldous Huxley said in Brave New World. People told what their job will be. Major restrictions on movement. Creation of human settlement zones. I'll get to them in a minute. Mass resettlement as people are forced to vacate land where they live, for reasons I'm coming to. Dumbing down education, achieved a long time ago. Mass global depopulation in pursuit of all of the above. And what they're doing to hide it is they're setting uh, Agenda 21 organisations up in all local communities, all over the world, America, Britain, all over the place, and they're giving the impression that each of these is basically an independent local community initiative when it's all being orchestrated through this organization, through the United Nations, called Local Governments for Sustainability. So I, when I came across all this stuff, I thought I'll have a look at the Isle of Wight, a few miles by a few miles. And I found that the uh, Isle of Wight had joined Agenda 21 in November 2000. And it says on the Agenda, uh, Agenda 21 Isle of Wight website, 
that it was developed and written in partnership with the people of the Isle of Wight and reflects their vision for the future of the island. Ever since I saw that, I have been asking everyone I meet on the Isle of Wight, have you ever heard of Agenda 21? No, mate. No, mate. No, mate. Nobody's heard of it. And yet, it was the, the people. This is going on all over the world. And they, they openly talk in some of these organizations connected to it about the post-democratic, post-industrial world, uh, which is basically symbolized in so many movies recently that are putting this stuff in. Now, so big new Brzezinski, um, big mentor of Barack Obama, one of the demo cons, he was the national security advisor to Jimmy Carter. And uh, he wrote in another of his uh, prophetic books, because he knows what's coming, uh, called uh, America's Role in the Technotronic Era, 1970. The technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite unrestrained by traditional values. Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities. 1970 he wrote that. Now, we've, got, uh, we've had a techni uh, technocracy which is defined as government by technicians specifically management of society by technical experts, including bankers, by the way, that includes. And look at what we've now got in Italy. We have, in one of the biggest economies and, and major countries of Europe, we have a government with not one elected official uh, in it, headed by this guy, Mario Monti. And we had a situation in Greece where we had this guy, Lucas Papademos, as a banker, uh, leader of the country, never seen a ballot box in his life. Um, this organization that I mentioned, I know these bloodlines are bloody good lookers, aren't they? <laughs> hey? I blame the inbreeding myself. Um, this is Brzezinski, comes from the planet Zog. Um, and, and this is David Rockefeller. Now they co-founded the Trilateral Commission one of those organizations in that Bilderberg Council on Foreign Relations uh, network with the Club of Rome that I've, I've shown. And um, uh, it just so happens that Mario Monti, before he became uh, unelected leader of Italy, was the European head of the Trilateral Commission and Lucas Papademos was a member of it. This is the first step to justifying problems, not least financial, to take away even the right of people to choose their own government, uh, rubbish as most of them are anyway, but at least we're, we've got a right to at least in theory uh, choose it, but no choice at all. Bringing the technocrats in, this is absolutely in line with Agenda 21. And these bloody politicians in Westminster uh, and uh, all around the world, Capitol Hill, or all kind of, you know, especially on Capitol Hill, bought and bloody paid for, they've got to realize that they're in the bloody sights of this uh, whole operation too, because they uh, are due to no longer exist, but to be uh, replaced by technocrats eventually. And they want a world of regions, uh, because if you're going to have total control of people in the Orwellian police state uh, way that they want. This is why that, you know, things like the Hunger Games, they uh, have sectors which are fenced off from the other sectors. It's you need to do it right into the local level if you want total control. And this is why you're seeing this uh, movement of the police state going into communities uh, at a lower and lower level. So one area of this structure that they want is uh, breaking countries up into regions. And this is one of the maps for how they intend to break up Europe, European Union, into regions. And what they, they have planned is that regions of one country are connected into regions uh, in another, therefore destroying national sovereignty and national uh, unity because they want an end to sovereignty. They want an end to all of it. They just want technocrats, bureaucrats, and uh, uniform impositions of the decisions made by those people and no democratic uh, things at all. Now, this is uh, 
something called America 2050. This is all connected into the agenda for Agenda 21. And they have broken up America into a series of mega regions in which they will have mega cities, what they call human settlement zones, which I'll get to. Um, and part of this Agenda 21 is for an enormous cull of the global population. And I'm not kidding when I say cull. I'm talking coming down to a billion or half a billion in a, in a, in a world now of more than seven uh, billion. Uh, there was the, the, in 1979, these appeared in Georgia. They're like, they're called America's Stonehenge, the Georgia Guidestones, they call them. No one can put their finger on, on where they came from, who, who was behind them and all the rest of it. They're aligned, astrologically aligned, and there's writing of them, written in stone and all that stuff, in different modern languages and some ancient languages, I think including Babylonian. And they call for the population of humanity to be maintained under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. A draft copy of the United Nations Global Biodiversity Assessment calls for the world population to be reduced to some one billion. And Nick Rockefeller told Aaron Russo um, uh, when that conversation took place that the population was going to be reduced by at least half. Whichever it is, there are massive reductions in population. And this guy, Gates and his missus, through the uh, Bill and Belinda Gates, uh, Melinda Gates Foundation, are absolutely bloody obsessed, Bono's mates, with uh, what they call population uh, reduction. This is the, uh, the image, the eye again, of this international hygiene uh, meeting or events in, uh, in Germany. And people don't realize that Hitler's race purity program was orchestrated from America and Britain not least through the Rockefeller family, who paid for a whole floor of a German university uh, to be occupied by Ernst Rudin and his team. Ernst Rudin was Hitler's race purity expert. And the Rockefellers, who were big time into eugenics and all this stuff, they sent eugenics experts to Germany to, to uh, uh, help and promote and give them uh, information, backing and expertise in the program. The way that they plan to cull the population is cumulatively and in some ways directly. The cumulative is through vaccinations, through genetically modified food. Americans are awash with genetically modified food through genetically modified corn and stuff. And the impact on American health is catabloodystrophic. Um, why wouldn't it be? Uh, fluoride and stuff in the water, hunger, also manufactured disease and radiation. And uh, also, uh, what did um, Dr. Richard Day say in 1969? Euthanasia and the demise pill. Limiting access to affordable medical care makes eliminating the elderly easier. We now have this Liverpool care pathway where doctors are deciding, often without even consulting the family, who is going to have their withdrawal of food, of uh, fluids and of drugs so that they die very quickly. Uh, it's not the care pathway, it's the death pathway. We also have this situation in America with the, the death panels deciding who gets treatment and who doesn't in, among the bloody elderly. It's euthanasia. That's what it bloody is. And, and here, in terms of reducing the population, how about this? First of all, sperm counts in many parts of the world are plummeting. Why? They want to reduce the population, plummeting. And here's, a, here's one. The third generation of rats fed genetically modified food becomes sterile. And there's a company, uh, a, a biotech company, a small one in California called Epicyte, and they came up with something called the Epicyte gene. You know, long ago today, when we started, and I was talking about crazes, well, crazes, okay, crazes. What they did, was isolate the gene that makes people sterile. It is a gene which, if it uh, uh, becomes part of your genetic uh, structure, attacks sperm. It attacks sperm if you are male and kills them, so you are sterile. And any uh, sperm entering the female, the female that has that 
a genetic uh, part of its structure, then attacks the sperm and kills it, so they're sterile. Now, why would you create that? Well, okay, I don't know. But what, what did they then do, Epicyte? They genetically engineered that gene into frigging corn. And then we go the next step. Monsanto and DuPont set up a joint venture to take over the epicyte gene and commercialize it. And if anyone thinks that, you know, this is an exaggeration involving um, reduction in population, this is a map of America under the um, uh, UN Convention on Biological Diversity, the Wildlands Project. Um, and it is America uh, that they want to see under Agenda 21. If you can't read the words, I'll tell you this. The red bits are for little to no human use. The yellow bits are for highly regulated use. The only bits for normal use are these bits here and there that are in green. And they have to therefore clear the land to bring this about. And that's what they are doing. Which explains so much that is going on that people don't say, why are they doing this? I'll tell you why they're doing this. Agenda 21, get them off the land. There's now a rural, uh, White House Rural Council, uh, which has all the government agencies, including the Department of Defense, to help rural communities know it is to rid rural communities of people under Agenda 21 and under eco-fascism. One of the things they're doing is creating more and more and more environmental regulations to make it impossible for small farmers and small growers and small landowners to survive in uh, the rural communities. And therefore, they're destroying the rural communities to get them off the land. They're sending in these SWAT teams, bloody Keystone, bloody cops, um, to uh, you know, treat decent people trying to grow organic and uh, raw milk, uh, uh, produce raw milk, they're treating them appallingly, brutally, horrifically. And they are designed to get people off the land. Monsanto, no food shall be grown that we don't own. And more and more regulations to get people in a situation where it's impossible to continue. And who moves in the corporations to take over the land? More and more, we're seeing, um, so many stories on my website recently, um, more and more people are um, having their community gardens destroyed because they're told it's not in, in the zonal regulations, even though people are hungry and are getting the food for nothing. They're being banned from growing food in their front garden and all the other stuff uh, at a time of, of great uh, um, economic challenge. And this is what Dr. Richard Day said in 1969. Growing food will be banned by saying it isn't safe and the state corporations will control all food production. The supply and distribution of food will be monitored so that no one can give food to a fugitive of the system. And they're also doing it by changing the regulations to stop people growing food at home. So that all these things are coming together so that only the food ink, big food, will control the food chain. And who gets food? Those that conform to the system. And they're doing it in other ways. When um, in 2011, uh, they had um, those floods in uh, the Missouri and Mississippi rivers, uh, the US Army Corps of Engineers announced that they had to blow the levees, I think it was on the Missouri, to save the people further down the river. So they blew the levees, and uh, this is what happened to the land of small farmers all around that region, destroyed. Three weeks later, letters arrive from the government offering to buy the land through the US Corps of Engineers, or Army of Engineers. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, what do they call it? And the other thing they're doing, is uh, 
taking out freeway exits to rural communities, which should be very helpful economically. And what they're doing instead is putting these corporation uh, kind of food uh, centres in the middle of bloody nowhere, which, ha which helps basically no one. And these communities, these rural communities are dying and people are leaving and they're taking their bloody land over. They are um, d taking out dams so that people can't farm anymore. They are destroying or, or, or um, closing rural roads. Or they are, on a massive scale, um, taking the uh, tarmac from roads and leaving them as gravel, um, making it more and more difficult for people to live in rural communities. It's all being done on purpose. And this bloke, you know when he came in, Cameron, never mentioned it in the election, and then suddenly announces he wants to sell off all the forests of Britain, all the state forests. That's Agenda 21. Now, because um, the, uh, the people responded, he had to take a step back, but he'll still go on trying to do it, if not en masse, then in little bits. And, and, and this big society, it's just agenda to bloody 21. And, and what's happening in this country? Small farmers are going out of business on a fantastic bloody scale. Getting them off the land, that's the bloody idea. And where do they want to put them in? Human settlement zones. They want this kind of in by 2050, 2060. And it's the world of the Hunger Games. They want, this is in their bloody documents, they want to pack people together in high-rise, basically, prison cell-sized uh, living space. Uh, so all the people, those that they don't want to cull, are in one place and they've cleared the land of everything else, straight off the pages of Hunger Games, that is. This is Michael Bloomberg, Mayor of New York, massive insider in all this and frontman. And he has just announced in the last few months the first phase of Agenda 21, he doesn't call it that, of course, um, building of 165,000 units in New York, right? Uh, absolutely, the specification and the way that they are going to be built and arranged is classic Agenda 21. And the space that these apartments will cover for each person uh, or family is between these two yellow lines. They are... 10 feet by 30 bloody feet. Classic Agenda 21. Building regulations are being changed in places like California to stop, uh, uh, to reduce the amount of land that is used to build buildings. And by 2020, this directive of the European Union says that all new building must use nearly zero energy by 2020. And that means massive changes in the structure and nature of human society and living space. And this is the Archon world of these Archon bloodlines that I talked about. No creativity. Humans have creativity. They have to use human creativity. They don't have it. And here, look at that. Here are some of the bloody houses that they are talking about for people under Agenda 21. You know, talk about bloody uninspired. And then one of the things that was emphasized in the Hunger Games was the uh, high-speed train that took the competitors from the sectors to the capital for this, you know, kill-to-the-death bloody games. And high-speed train uh, networks are all part of Agenda 21. They want that to be the main source because they want an end of people and cars and stuff like that, except then. Um, but they want high-speed trains to be the, 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 the prime source of, or uh, form of uh, transport. And uh, interestingly, you know, here's the uh, regions that they want under Agenda 21 in America, everyone else off the land in all these other places. And, you know, once the plane arrived, American trains just disappeared, Amtrak, they just, you know, basically hardly anyone used them. It was all, it was all aircraft. Well, suddenly, out of nowhere, um, uh, Obama announced a massive building program uh, phase building program for high-speed train networks in America. And when you look at where he wants to build them, it's like placing them over a map of the Agenda 21 regions of America. And then, of course, out of nowhere, uh, Cameron announced this year the biggest 
railway building program since Victorian times with high-speed stuff. And high, these high-speed uh, networks are happening all over Europe. And I tell you this, I know this for a fact, that at least some, probably many, of the people apparently working for European um, train companies orchestrating this uh, high-speed network they're building don't work for the train companies, they work for bloody NATO who's, that, that, uh, that uh, is doing the orchestrating. Get them off the land, well, get them off the land through weather manipulation. Well, we're seeing this big time now. This is um, HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project in Alaska, now connected to many other similar things around the world. In short, it bounces radio waves of high power off the ionosphere in the higher uh, atmosphere, bounces them back to Earth and can do many, many things, including create earthquakes and piece of cake, manipulate the weather. Um, one of the telltale signs of an earthquake created artificially appears to be these colored lights that appear in the sky, or colored uh, images in the sky, which, which uh, precede an earthquake. And this guy, Professor Kosuki Haki, expert in GPS signals, he said uh, in the mainstream media, one hour before an earthquake in Japan and the one in Chile in 2002, there were more electrons coming through the ionosphere. This is a very strange phenomenon. Well, not if you're dealing with technology that not only bounces radio waves off the ionosphere, but often punches holes in the ionosphere when it's doing it. Um, and even in the... Um, Even in the patent that was applied for by a guy called Bernus Eastland for the original harp technology mentions this man, Nikolai Tesla. He was, the, uh, in truth, the scientific genius of the 20th century. And he'd probably be the scientific genius of the 21st if he was still here. What he had done is cross the bloody line, which mainstream science will not do because of all the implications for the agenda if it does. That line is to cross the line into understanding uh, a greater understanding of what uh, reality is and how you can use it to create all the warmth and power you need without, uh, once the technology is there, without cost. And uh, part of that is accessing the electrical level of the universe, what I've been talking about, and turning it into usable warmth and power. And what did he say? If you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. He was making uh, weather effects. P his neighbors were complaining to the police. He was creating lightning above his home in New York. He created mini bloody earthquakes with uh, thousands of uh, uh, windows uh, crashing when the technology uh, you know, went, went more than he thought. And like you know, kind of crazy bloody comedy film, he couldn't turn the bloody thing off and all the bloody windows were going. And he also understood how to create free energy. Like I say, accessing the natural power and, and uh, sources of power in the universe and turning it into usable uh, power and warmth without cost and without, if you like, carbon dioxide. Now, the same bloody people that are saying we must do all this to save the world from carbon dioxide are the same people that have been suppressing this technology for bloody decade after decade after decade. <laughs> Now, in terms of weather manipulation, Dr. Richard Day, the 1969 man, he actually worked on weapon manipulation in the US military during World War II. And the BBC recently did a radio documentary in which they exposed that the great flood at Lynmouth in 1952, when they had 250 times the rainfall, and it uh, created this massive like, wave of water that came through the, 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 the village, killing 35 people, was actually done by the RAF. Um, and it, they called it Operation Cumulus, also Operation Witch Doctor. And uh, it was manipulated on purpose as an experiment on weather uh, manipulation. It's been going on that long and earlier. Here is a, a US Air Force document, two, uh, uh, 1996. It describes the artificial creation of floods, hurricanes, droughts, and earthquakes, and continues. Weather mo modification will become a part of domestic and international security and could be done unilaterally. 
It could have offensive and defensive applications and even be used for deterrence purposes. The ability to generate precipitation, fog storms on Earth, to modify space weather and the production of artificial weather all are part of an integrated set of military technologies. Now, of course, most people... Most people will now be bloody aware, my God, were we bombarded uh, this year or what, with chemtrails, not contrails, which disappear, condensation trails, chemtrails that don't disappear if they come out the back of these bloody aircraft. They stay around and they come out and eventually drop to the, to the, to the earth and they have strontium, they have aluminium, they have barium. It's acidifying water, it's acidifying the land and it is causing uh, tremendous uh, impacts uh, on human health, cumulatively, again, the coal. But it's doing something else. In the um, HARP patents uh, and uh, specifications, etc., cetera, um, in the description of a, a researcher uh, describing and summarizing what it said, it said this, dispersed metallic particles such as aluminium, barium and strontium, the main chemical ingredients uh, of chemtrails, or ingredients of chemtrails, may increase the atmosphere's conductivity and therefore enhance HARP's weather modification performance. So it's doing that as well. So where am I going with this? Well, I'm going here. Dr. Richard Day, 1969, the weather will be modified and used as a weapon of war to create drought or famine. A weapon of war against who? In Agenda 21 terms, a weapon of war against the small farmers, landowners and growers of the world, not least in America. We have had in America this massive drought this year, which has devastated uh, small independent farmers and growers. Of course, the big bloody corporations can cope with it. Got unlimited bloody funds when they're part of the agenda. And so, also, in uh, 2011 and other times, we've had these extraordinary forests of tornadoes. It was about 300 in a period of three days at one point. Uh, I think it was 2011. And that, of course, is devastating rural communities uh, and what have you. Creating uh, tornadoes with harp technology, child's bloody play. And, and uh, what have we had in this country? Devastating weather and floods, which again has had a massive impact upon small farmers and growers. And you know, um, there was a report for the European Parliament, a European Parliament committee in the 1990s, about HARP, which was actually quite good because it was saying, hold on a minute, we don't like this. And one of the things it was saying is that HARP technology had the ability to manipulate the jet stream and change weather patterns. Well, when you look at the meteorological explanation for the great deluge in Britain this summer, they say extraordinary things happen to the jet stream. And instead of going away and taking, you know, dropping some and going off into Europe, it basically started doing this, which is why we got the bloody lot. And when the farmers and growers collapse, in come the big agribusiness people, the network to take over the land for cents on the dollar. Also, we're having this uh, devastating impact upon the bee uh, population around the world. Monsanto, another word for bloody evil. And the other part of this is to create food shortages. No, uh, food shortages because it do, it's not there, because of the, the production and food shortages that people simply cannot afford it because it's so bloody expensive. And uh, control if they eat and their hearts and minds will follow. This is all part of the control system that they're bringing on. Get them off the land three. Financially, get them off the land. They can't afford to stay there anymore. Um, there you go. That's a, there you go. This is, the, um, this is where we're at. Hunger Games. Agenda 21 or what? 3.5 million homeless, 18.5 million vacant homes in the United States. There you go. Oh, you poor. What a joke. Woman in one million pound hat makes speech about austerity. <laughs> P 
praying for starving children while sitting on a golden throne. This is the dynamic between people, politicians and banks. These answer to the same masters, thus they ch change legislation to suit them and screw them. This is how it works through this system. This is why the governments are not doing what's right for people, economically or any other way. They're doing it for that which, which they represent. Politics, banking and all their other stuff. One global unit. As this guy, I won't say it again, but this guy was talking about all the Satanists in banking. And this guy said, um, the system is broken, it was built this way. Of course it was. You know, uh, let's get this right. I go to a bank, yeah, 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 and you lend me money that doesn't exist and then I pay you interest on it, plus the bloody principal, right? Let me get me head around that. But that's what's happening. They've created a system because of the dynamic of the politicians uh, representing the banks. Legislation has been passed that allows banks to lend at least 10 times what they have on deposit, fractional reserve lending. So every time we borrow uh, $50,000 from a bank, um, uh, or, or putting $50,000 into a bank, let's put it the other way, they can now lend 10 times that, which doesn't exist, to other people that come and want a loan. It's interesting when you follow this around the banking system, one loan. I go for a loan. Can you, can you lend me £50,000? Yes, I can. Why were you going to lend it me? I'm going to type £50,000 into your account. Where's it coming from? Oh, just type it in. That's no problem. So, okay, now you've got £50,000, right? Which, which, which we have created out of nothing. Fresh air. Okay, so you get it. In theory, these figures on your screen. You see a car you like. You go over here. And, and, and you, um, you say, I'll pay for the car. You give him 10 grand or five grand for the car, whatever. He then takes that money and he puts it in his bank. Now this bank can lend 10 times that, which has come from this, which was created out of bugger all in the first place. And when you follow this through the banking system, the amount of uh, money that can be created from a single loan that was out of nowhere in the first place is absolutely bloody fantastic. These people, if they were charged, if they were charged with criminal activity, they would have to reincarnate many times to finish the bloody sentence. But it's it's worse than that because who creates money? Governments create money. No, they don't. Overwhelmingly, private banks create money by issuing non-existent money called credit. Thus, this is how the economic cycle goes. Banks issue lots of credit. A boom is created. Um, in the boom, people feel more confident because they've got lots of orders in their business and they've got jobs look safe. They borrow more money. Uh, companies borrow money for more plant and machinery. Uh, people borrow money to go uh, have a bigger house, a bigger car or, or a bigger holiday or whatever. What happens in a boom is people tend to get more and more into debt, credit card and all that stuff. And then at the optimum point, the fishing line has gone out there, now they're pulling it in. They create a crisis or a reason to take money out of circulation, not make as many loans. What do they call it in 2008? A credit crunch. Nice one. And, and then suddenly there's not this same amount of money in circulation, even non-existent stuff, um, to create the economic activity that was created before. So suddenly people can't buy as many things, people don't sell as many things, and therefore businesses start to shed workers or go out of business. People can't pay their mortgages, so they lose their homes. And the banks that have created this situation by lending money that doesn't exist, plus interest, then get all that wealth that does exist as they call in loans of, of, uh, uh, of uh, collateral. And this is how over uh, centuries, fishing line out, fishing line back, they have hijacked the real wealth of the bloody world and the Rothschilds are massively behind uh, this in uh, the banking system. This is Nathan Rothschild, the man who was responsible for building up the Rothschild uh, empire in Britain. I care not what puppet is placed upon the throne of England to rule the empire on which the sun never sets. The man who controls Britain's money supply controls the British Empire and I control the British money uh, supply. And if you have one single currency 
It, whoever controls that money supply controls the bloody world. That's the idea. And if you control the banks and you control the central banks and you control the reporting of the financial industry, you stitch the whole bloody thing up. In um, 2008, when the crash happened, I said that three things would happen. First of all, there was the crash of 2008 that had happened, then so that said there's a problem. Two, governments throw fantastic amounts of borrowed money uh, credit at the perpetrators, the banks, until their financial barrels are empty. We're there. And then at some point, they want to crash the economy again on a massive scale to uh, create the situation where there is a complete transformation of the financial system in the way that they want to uh, uh, create it. And it will be based on a world central bank, they're already talking about it, which would dictate all global finance. What are they doing in the European Union? Stepping stones, totalitarian tiptoe. They're saying as a result of the financial crisis in Europe, which these have created, we must have centralized control of all the banking of Europe. And then you look at the people who are coming forward to solve the problem. Um, when uh, we had the crash in 2008, Bush, the Bush um, uh, Treasury Secretary was Hank Paulson, who'd come a few years earlier from Goldman Sachs, where he was Chief Executive Officer. Um, the new head of the European Central Bank is Mario Draghi. Mario Draghi is a former employee of Goldman Sachs. The guy currently unelected and running Italy, uh, Mario Monti, is a former executive of Goldman Sachs. And former executive of Goldman Sachs is like saying former agent of the bloody CIA. They never are. So all this money was hosed at the banking system, and in that way, a banking crisis became a government crisis. Because now, <laughs> the money's come from the government to the banks, and the governments are then making it a people crisis. And we said, what just happened? I thought it was a banking crisis. Now they're taking everything away. Austerity programs. Agenda 21. That's what it's all about. And see, what they want is a single currency. That's what they want. So the euro was never an end in itself. It was always a stepping stone to the single currency. All the euro is, is a stalking horse which has been used to delete the multi-currencies of Europe. It's deleted the guilder, it's deleted the mark, it's deleted the lira. But it's not an end in itself. It's a, a way of deleting all those independent currencies. And they want eventually the euro, it might be tomorrow, but they want the euro to disappear so the world currency can come forward. Um, and people like George Soros, one of the demo cons and a, a Rothschild frontman, um, he and the Vatican has called for world central bank and a world government and all the rest of it. The IMF, which is just another agency of the bloodlines, is now taking over control of countries like Ireland and others uh, on the basis of this, uh, this uh, economic crash which has been manipulated. And again, no heart, no empathy, consequences for people, consequences for families, consequences for children, they couldn't give a shit because they have no empathy. And what we are seeing all over Europe is this gathering uh, economic situation because it's manipulated for a specific end. Britain is now one trillion pounds in debt. And the more and more debt people or countries get into, the more and more control they give away to others. America has just passed $16 trillion in debt. In truth, it's bloody bankrupt. And it's being done systematically. I've been saying this for years. America is being used to destroy America, economically and militarily. Any country that cared about the people in a massive economic crisis would not be spending trillions on the bloody military and wars in different parts of the world. But it ain't the American military. It's the cabal's military being used to orchestrate the campaign of acquisition for the cabal. 
Therefore, they're just using America's economy to bloody pay for it. And the idea of destroying America is if you have superpowers that have the economic and military might to say no to your world government, you do not have a world dictatorship. So destroying superpowers is absolutely crucial to this world dictatorship that they want to bring in and are in the process of bringing in. And then there's these bloody uh, credit ratings agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's and Fitch. They were the buggers that gave AAA ratings to total shite that actually helped massively to cause the crash of 2008. <laughs> now, they're credit rating countries and bringing mayhem. And the media are saying, oh, there's trouble, for, there's trouble at mill for Portugal. The credit ratings agencies are downgrading. They're bloody owned by the same people that own the banks, for goodness sake. It's all a scam. And this is, this is the Hunger Games world, the Agenda 21 world that's unfolding. And, and you know, it's great that people are challenging this. Uh, thing with the, the protests and stuff, but you need to go, go more than that. And they need to get streetwise. Because in the end, this world government structure of fascist control, it's not bothered about what the form of control is. It just wants the control. So it's quite happy for independent banks and biotechs and, 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 and energy companies to be brought together under so-called government control, uh, under like all the Orwell's ministries. Uh, so they'd have a, ministry, a world ministry of oil, a world ministry of biotech. The World Health Organization, created by the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, by the way, um, would become the World Health Ministry, controlling all uh, pharmaceutical stuff and, and health and what have you, what passes for health for these people. Um, and therefore, we've got to be streetwise that when we, if we see this, this happening, we don't say, yeah, get the banks and all that stuff, because will be cheering for the next stage of control, which is even more than it is now. We've got to get streetwise. Another thing, just a quick aside, there is a massive, massive problem uh, in the background of gold that ain't bloody gold, that's actually gold-covered tungsten, which is uh, uh, counted as gold, and when that bloody uh, comes home to roost, that's a massive impact on the economy as well. Um, and talking about you know, the economy and debt, this is what this is about. Debt is control. So let's get young people up to their neck in debt, massive debt, um, which they then spend the rest of their lives paying off. <laughs> just to be bloody programmed with a systems version of events. This is a great list. This is what you learn from school. Truth comes from authority. Intelligence is the ability to remember and repeat. Accurate memory and repetition are rewarded. Non-compliance is punished. Conform intellectually and socially. This guy, H.L. Mencken, said, the aim of public education is not to spread enlightenment at all. It is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same self-level, to breed a standard citizenry, to put down dissent and originality. And there was a study, there was a study at the William and Mary uh, College in Virginia where they studied the personality changes as people went through school. And they found this, a massive decline in creativity as children have become less emotionally expressive, less energetic, less talkative and verbally expressive, less humorous, less imaginative, less unconventional, less lively and passionate, less perceptive, less apt to connect seemingly irrelevant things, dots, um, less synthesizing and less likely to see things from a different angle. That's what they found happens as people go further and further into system. And now uh, they want to create, they take this system and they want to make the kids pay for it with debt for much of the rest of their lives, right? Now, here's my suggestion, here's my question. What do you want to bloody do it for? What do you want to do it for? Why do you want to go through this system and have them tell you what you must think about every bloody thing? And if you don't tell the exam paper what it's told you to believe, then you won't pass. Why um, is it the done thing that you, you go through school, kitty kitty, and then you, you then have to go to university? 
Oh, yes, you go to university. That's what you have to do. Oh, you've got a chance to go to university and you're not taking it. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, I'm not speaking to you anymore. And I'm your father. And all this bollocks, right? Well, and I, and I see, I see these, um, these protests of young people and students in London and stuff over the ever-increasing uh, uh, fees that are being charged to get ever-increasing debt for control over young people at the earliest possible uh, uh, stage in their lives. And I see them do their protests and all that stuff, and that's great. And then they go back to bloody college and university. The only way it's going to change is if they refuse to bloody go. Don't take part in the system. Now, And then they say, well, I won't get a good job if I don't go to university. I know university students are packing shelves in supermarkets. Surely you have the, 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 the creative ability to create a life without going through this friggin' sausage machine. Come on, we can do this. We don't need the bloody system. Perception control. This is, this is a major thing that's going on. They're creating an electromagnetic sub-reality to talk to us within the frequency of human brainwave and electromagnetic activity. Um, and this is what these are about. First of all, America, Britain, anyone else listening, we need a massive no-compliance rebellion against these freaking things. Watch the word smart. Big red alert. Smart is the buzzword of Agenda 21. It talks about smart meters, smart grids, smart cities, human settlement zones. Smart growth, smart drugs, smart freaking ass. That's when it, when it's talking about smart Agenda 21. Da -da -da -da. And what is this bloody old thing? This is in their own bloody documents, not bloody, you know, sitting in a darkened room working this out, bloody telling you. This is a plan to create eventually a global smart grid. And what the smart meters are as part of the smart grid, they create, in effect, a electromagnetic internet, wireless internet in your home very, very uh, bad for health, especially the young. And also, it's about not only picking up information from your home and delivering that information to a central source, but also uh, bringing information into your home within the human brainwave and electromagnetic uh, frequencies to speak to you uh, subconsciously and deliver you with the perceptions that they want. Let's look at this. This is um, CIA director David Petraeus in a speech he made or a talk he talked about the uh, Internet of Things. This is what he said. Uh, Items of interest will be located, identified, monitored and remotely controlled through technologies such as radio frequency identification, microchips, sensor networks, tiny embedded servers and energy harvesters, all connected to the next generation of internet uh, uh, using uh, abundant, low cost and high power computing that would transform the art of spying and allow people to be monitored and automatically, uh, automatically without planting bugs or direct infiltration. He said that this involved new technologies which added processes and web connections to previously home appliances um, like fridges, ovens, lighting systems, remember that for a second. This is known as the Internet of Things. Petraeus has confirmed that people would be watched through televisions. These are Orwell's tele uh, screens. So the idea of the smart meters is to create this, en this energetic environment, this information environment, which is delivering information about you, 
to the authorities and delivering information from the authorities at the subconscious level to speak to you. The smart grid is watching you. And the idea then is to connect these grids in different countries into a global grid. They talk about it in their documents. And, you know, on just the, um, uh, the health dangers alone, especially to children, uh, this is the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. The board of AAEM opposes the installation of smart meters in homes and schools based on scientific assessment of the current medical literature, which raises credible questions about genetic and cellular effects, hormonal effects, male fertility, yes, blood-brain barrier damage and increased risk of certain types of cancers from um, RF or ELF levels similar to those emitted from smart meters. The board finds it unacceptable from a public health standpoint to implement this technology until these serious medical concerns are resolved. We consider a moratorium of installation of wireless smart meters to be an issue of the highest importance. Ignored because why? It's the agenda for Agenda 21. This lady uh, thought she'd go green. She doesn't have to quite yet, with a, with a, but they wanted to very shortly in America with these uh, green anything but uh, bulbs. Um, which are now being imposed upon us in Europe, of course, and other places around the world. And uh, she thought she'd buy some of these things, these uh, bulbs have got mercury in them. And she put one in her daughter's bedroom. And uh, it broke. So she called Home Depot and asked them what she should do. And they said, well, you better call the state authorities and they'll tell you. And they told her she had to employ this private company to come and clean up her uh, daughter's bedroom of this uh, contamination from mercury and it cost her $2,000 for one light bulb. And if you look at the British health uh, advice and regulations for these things when they break, it's do everything but evacuate your bloody home. It is ludicrous. These mercury bulbs are going to go and are going onto, um, uh, you know, open bloody uh, rubbish sites and tips and they're going to break of course they are and the, the mercury's going to get in the groundwater supplies and all that stuff um, and, and we're talking billions and billions that are used around the world um, and the other thing about this you know what that is that is a transmitter of information that's what that is and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean um, red flag when any authority doesn't say we encourage you to use these but says, no, no, you are going to use these because we're going to ban the bloody alternative. That's what they've done with these bulbs. And, because, uh, and when they do that, it's the agenda. Uh, and when it's the agenda, it is more than what seems to be the case. And it's always about human control and, and often increasingly uh, destroying human health. The woodpecker signal came about, I think it was in the 1970s, came to light. And it was a signal that the Soviet Union was um, broadcasting into America. And they called it the um, woodpecker signal because it was going rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat, like, a, like a, a woodpecker. And what it was doing was delivering subliminal information into America to affect the perceptions of Americans. Um, and these two um, guys, Dr. Robert Beck, an expert in nuclear engineering, and Dr. Michael Pessinger of the Laurentian University in Canada, an expert in extremely low frequency radiation. They made a study of the potential of electromagnetic mind control. This is what the smart meters are, electromagnetic mind control. Uh, Dr. Beck told a Psychotronics Association conference in 1979, that long ago, that human subjects exposed to certain ELF field patterns reported sensations of uneasiness, depression, and foreboding. He said that he had measured the Russian woodpecker signal and found that it was acting like gangbusters right in the window of human psychoactivity. Exactly. Get in there by going on the same frequency the bloody brain works on. Now, here's the point. He said the signal, was uh, the woodpecker signal, was permeating power grids in the United States. It was being picked up by power lines, re-radiated, and it was coming into homes on the light circuits. Now that was doing that in a light circuit electrical system that was not purpose built for the job. The smart meters and the smart grids are purpose built deliverers of subliminal information 
into every home and business that is involved in them. If we don't say no to this, then might as well put our bloody hands out and get the shackles on. Come on, enough. And all the things these bloody lights do to people, they're not even any bloody good. You got a hotel with them in, I never put them on. Which, when you bloody do, you can't read anything. They're rubbish, because that's not what they're there to do. And uh, of this radiation agenda, look at that. That's five minute, 15 minute rather phone call on these bloody things. What do they put phone calls on one of the most lethal parts of the electromagnetic spectrum? It's bloody lunacy. But it's not if you know what they're trying to do. So what they, we see with all these transmitters and stuff is they're creating a sub-reality, an electromagnetic field, information field, to feed us information and a, a, another level of the fake reality. This is what's happening. And what it's doing is locking into the electromagnetic field, because that's what it is, electromagnetic uh, phenomena, and it's coming through to affect the holographic level, because if you distort the electromagnetic field, you distort the holographic level in terms of health. And this guy, Michael Persinger, again, a, a neuroscientist at the Laurentian University in Canada, said this, absolutely right. For the first time in our evolutionary history, we have generated an entire secondary virtual densely complex environment an electromagnetic soup that essentially overlaps the human nervous system exactly this is what we're looking at this is this is this is the paddle stores in shit creek we're looking at here finding out what, what's bloody happening so we can do something about it the radiation agenda i've been looking at this for bloody years ticking off the uh, sources of radiation as they just compound on top of each other. Um, one of the things that um, the uh, European Parliament report said about HARP is that it was punching holes in the ionosphere um, and, and allowing cosmic radiation in that shouldn't be getting in. Um, you've then got the smart meters, you've got the electricity grids, you've got the phones, you've got the uh, Wi-Fi, and then you've got all the bloody uh, 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 spent uranium that's coming uh, in the weapons in all these bloody wars they're dropping uh, uh, these bombs they're dropping around the world and you're getting all these genetic uh, effects horrible genetic effects in the next generation because of the distortion of the DNA yes distortion of the genetic structure and then you've got Fukushima I'm not going to go into this now but it's, it's in my last book remember who you are I have no way Fukushima was a bloody accident no way And look at it, ever since it's been pouring ridiculous amounts of radiation into the atmosphere. And uh, maybe there's another reason for that. Because you know what people say who, who research this but only get as far as the five cents level? They say, but why would these people poison their own atmosphere? Well, the people, the entities behind this are not like us and they want control of the planet. They cannot um, come here for long because there are vibrational and atmospheric reasons why they can't stay, and that's why they need the bloodlines as middlemen and women. What if, a big what if I say, that they're trying to change the atmosphere? And they have these bombs all over the world, these nuclear bombs called nuclear power stations. And I talked to a lady in the 1990s at length, a lady called Dr. Kitty Little. She was an Oxford Don, getting on in years at the time. And uh, she was, had been massively involved in the nuclear industry, uh, government level and stuff, uh, uh, various institutions. And she told me uh, at the time, she said, you know, the Rothschilds were absolutely the people that brought in nuclear power. They were the ones that made it happen. And if the Rothschilds do it, there is an agenda for human control or human uh, negative effects because that's all they bloody do. So what about if they're changing the atmosphere? And um, another thing they say, people say is, why would they destroy their own planet? Well, this planet's different to the ones that they operate on. These bloodlines are the ones that are destroying the fricking planet. These are the corporations destroying rainforests. 
Uh, people like Monsanto are destroying massively species diversity, so we're becoming a monoculture. The planet is being killed by these people. The organic planet is being killed by the inorganic. Monsanto wants to replace all natural crops and seed varieties worldwide with genetically modified species. They are creating the GMO superweeds, which are creating mayhem. This is the Archon world, what the corporations are doing to the rainforests. And the bloody Greens ought to turn their bloody heads and, at this uh, uh, a part of the agenda and not be diverted away from this bollocks which is being orchestrated by the people doing this. It's interesting that um, they, they talk about the Grim Reaper in terms of genetically modified food. The Grim Reaper, yeah, Saturn. There's uh, Monsanto. What they do, this guy Michael Taylor, he's a, a Monsanto executive, and then he moves to a government agency that's supposed to be policing uh, Monsanto. And then he moves back to Monsanto, and now he moves back to government that's supposed to be policing Monsanto. And now this guy, this crook, is in charge, in effect, of the entire United States food policy. And he's, he's a front man for Monsanto. There you go, GMO. What is it doing? It's genetically modifying us. And if you go to davidike.com and the Medical Health Archive and look up Genetic Roulette, it's a documentary about the effect of GM on human genetics. It is absolutely a must watch. So, perception control, um, agenda 21. Giving us all this crap is not only poisoning us, <clears throat> although that's part of the cull, cumulative poisoning, um, but it's uh, also destabilizing, again, you know, we see all this shite here, but actually it's distorted information. It's distorting the way the human form decodes reality and interacts with reality so that we are in, in more and more uh, creating a distorted reality, not seeing things in clarity. Uh, uh, it's like a computer that's malfunctioning. And we, they're putting fluoride in the water. Why would they bloody do that? It's part of the agenda, that's why. This is fluoride, an ingredient in Prozac, sarin nerve gas, rat cockroach poisons, and pesticides, anesthetic, hypnotic, and psychiatric drugs, and uh, it doesn't stop tooth decay. Um, this is from the website of one of the companies that sells fluoride for water fluoridation. This is what it says about fluoride on its own website. There's many other examples of this with other companies that do it. Fluoride is used in the manufacture of effervescing uh, steel and the smelting and refining of light metals. It is also used in fluoridation of drinking water as a wood preservative, an adhesive preservative, an insecticide, a protective coating for metals, a pickle for steels and other metals, a flux for soldering and welding, as well as a flux and pacifier for ceramic, glass and porcelain enamel. They're putting it in the bloody water. They're putting it in the toothpaste. That's what it's doing with fluorosis. But why would any sane people who care about humanity be putting the bloody uh, waste products from the aluminium industry into drinking water and toothpaste? They would be doing it if they had an agenda for the mental, emotional, and physical suppression of humanity. That's why they would do it. And um, <clears throat> some research is pointing to the fact that fluoride, when it's connected with the uh, aluminium in uh, chemtrails, creates something called aluminium fluoride, which has been connected to mass sedation and dementia. And this guy, Dr. Dean Burke, 34 years at the National Cancer Institute in America, said in point of fact, fluoride causes more human cancer death and it causes it faster than any other chemical. Think uh, coal agenda. And it calcifies the pineal gland, which takes us into other levels of reality. And now they're openly talking about putting lithium in the drinking water, which will make us happy and love our servitude, exactly as Ola Suxley talked about in Brave New World. And this is how they're doing it, because Big Pharma connects into the same bloody force as the secret societies, Satanism and the political structure, thus they all work as one unit. And it's the same with the World Health Organization and uh, the uh, 
pharmaceutical cartel, they all work as one, and therefore they come together to say it's great to poison the immune system of uh, babies and uh, very small children while the immune system is still forming because then the immune system will never ever be as effective through their lives as it would have been left to its own devices. And this guy, Bill Gates, watch him like a bloody hawk with field glasses on. Uh, this guy is involved in everything in terms of funding through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that is the agenda. Uh, funding vaccinations around the bloody uh, developing world on a massive scale. Uh, funding things and promoting climate change, being real. Putting sulfur in the bloody atmosphere to manipulate on behalf of saving the bloody planet. We need saving from Bill Sodding Gates, in my view. And, um, He's massively, he's obsessed with population control and now he's getting in with Monsanto and bloody Bono and these people put bloody genetically modified food with his vaccines in places like Africa because we have to have genetically modified food because then we can feed the world. No, we can't. We will starve the world because it destroys the soil, it destroys the crops and it destroys genetic diversity. They are... Um, they are unbelievably, uh, uh, in terms of scale, uh, uh, drugging the young of the world, finding more and more reasons to give them drugs. Attention deficit disorder. I, I, I've got an answer to that. Give them something interesting to do or let them express their own uniqueness. No, give them a drug. I had, I had attention deficit disorder when I was at school. It was called, be, called being blood, bloody stiff by what they were trying to tell me. I had a cure for it, daydreaming out the window, no drug necessary. And all this is in Brave New World, it's all a long plan. All these guys, oh there you go, bloody mad. And this is the other agenda. They want to kind of drug people and poison people, but there are other people with a mind of their own that actually can see this and are trying to avoid it with organic food um, and with um, alternative uh, methods of healing, with uh, alternative uh, supplements that, that the food no longer gives us. And the authorities like the EU and the Food and Drug Administration in America and all these bloody crooks, they're all front agencies for the um, biotech and pharmaceutical cartel and they are destroying the opposition and they're doing something more. They're destroying any alternative to the, um, to the corporate system because they want everybody in there, no exceptions. And, 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 and you know, I, I, the last time I saw a doctor, I passed him in the bloody street. All right, how are you doing? And, and, and walked on and, and you know, I go to a, a, a guy called Mike Lambert at the Shen Clinic on the Isle of Wight, freaking genius when it comes to healing. And, and you know, I feel bloody great, me, absolutely great. And I, you know, I don't take their sodding drugs. Anybody, uh, anybody wants to have a word with a bloody healing genius, Shen Clinic, Isle of Wight, ride. Thoroughly recommended. Now, the Fabian Society was actually named after a Roman general called Fabius. And his claim to fame was never having battles with the enemy that could prove decisive either way. His method of taking over was to weaken and weaken and weaken the enemy over a period of time. And then when they were so weak to resist, then move in. That is precisely what the system is doing. It's making us weaker and weaker, well, people that go with it at the moment, weaker and weaker by the food we eat, the water we drink, uh, by the electromagnetic fields that we come into, by, by uh, economic uh, suppression and manipulation. All these things are being done to weaken and weaken and weaken the target population uh, Fabius style, so eventually they think they can just walk in when we're too weak to resist. That's the bloody idea. Physical control. Uh, I'll get through this uh, pretty quick. Physical control, okay. Major aspect of physical control. Take over the countries. This is not a map, it's a wish list. 
It's a wish list of countries in North Africa, the Middle East and the Near East, which they are picking off one after the other. Libya, now they're into Syria, and they're starting trouble in uh, Lebanon, they're in Iraq, they're in Afghanistan. Of course, they want Iran. And what they're doing is they're finding different excuses to pick off different countries because they have to find different excuses or people might think that there's a pattern here. Um, this is uh, what uh, Libya looked like in 2007. This is what the same street looks like in 2011. This is Libya. Hey, you are free. And uh, this is what happens when you pepper bomb cities to protect civilians from violence. Um, what happened? I got no brief for bloody Gaddafi and all that stuff, but um, that's not the point. What happened was that they've got this system where they want to target someone. So what they do is they fund and train rebels covertly and they bloody arm them. And, and then they get the rebels to start shooting at government targets. Political response, media response. Then the governments start shooting back at the rebels. Political response, they're shooting and killing their own people. Media response, the same. Oh, we've got to send people in, humanitarian. And in come the de facto bloody world army, NATO, dropping bombs everywhere. And now they're doing the same in bloody Syria. Not a Syrian civil war, it's a mercenary bloody war. That's what that is. You know, NATO bloody weapons here in the boxes for them. And you know, you know the, uh, this Ameri uh, neocon organization, the Project for the New American Century, um, it, uh, it was behind the Bush administration. And uh, in 2000, uh, uh, September 2000, before the Bush administration came in, uh, it produced a document um, which called for uh, the incoming Bush administration in America to fight, quote, multiple theatres of war uh, in places like Libya and Syria and, and all these countries. Um, but it said in the document in September 2000, but this process of transformation, this takeover of country after country, uh, was likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. One year to the month after that document was published, nine months after the same people came to power in the Bush administration, the United States had what Bush called our Pearl Harbor. And as a result, they justified the targeting of all the countries that were in that document. This is a man called General Wesley Clark, and he said this in a television interview. This, this, is, this is not God's gift of peace either. He, he led the NATO attacks in the former Yugoslavia. But he said in a television interview in 2007 that um, immediately, immediately after 9-11, he was told that a, a coup was being plotted by Dick Cheney, vice president then, um, Don Rumsfeld, defense secretary, Paul Wolfowitz, Defence Secretary Deputy, and what he called a half a dozen other collaborators from the Project for the New American Century that included an invasion of Iraq. Six weeks later, he said, he was back with the guy, uh, and he, he saw the same officer, and he said, why haven't we attacked Iraq? Are we still going to attack Iraq? And this officer said to him, uh, this is again, you know, after 9-11, six weeks, sir, it's worse than that. The officer pulled up a piece of paper off his desk and said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office. It says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan and Iran. And Clark said the aim of the plot was they wanted, to destabilize, wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down and make it under our control. And that is the agenda that's been followed. And all these excuses to pick off country over country are just that, bloody excuses. And um, of course, one of the things they want is to get to the, to the China and Russian border. They want a third world war with China and Russia. It's been in their documents for ages. 
And so what we're seeing are these people going through the Middle East using different excuses to pick off their target countries. You know, oh, America stands for freedom. We want to protect Brazilians. We only care about peace. Ah, only kidding, only kidding. She's Hillary speaking. No, I just love it. Oh, yes, I love it. Syria next, kill them. Oh, I love it. There you are, that's bloody NATO. There you go, I like that. So we look at Iran. We look at Iran, and this is how many wars they have um, instigated or fought since the Second World War. Actually, that's how many they've instigated, and, uh, instigated for about 200 bloody years. This is how many the USA has fought with Britain in, in tag most of the bloody time uh, since um, the Second World War. These are American bases around Iran. Who's threatening who, one wonders? <laughs> Iranians are just the same as you and me. People that just want to get on with their lives and their families and all the rest of it. But let's demonize them. Let's demonize them and let's bomb them. Why? We have no heart. We love death. These bloody pillocks doing all this stuff. Violent extremists. Yeah, look in the bloody mirror. Look at them. Talk about inversion. The bloody terrorists fighting terrorism. I love it. War is peace. Slavery is freedom. Ignorance is strength. What is that? Archontic inversion. It's all that bloody movie that we're uh, uh, coming through and, and it's all leading up to World War III. I'm not going to go into this in bloody uh, detail uh, because of time, but Rothschild Zionism, which is actually not about Jewish people, it's about a secret society created and instigated and controlled by the Rothschilds, that the uh, Jewish people have used as a bloody front to cover the real uh, uh, thing about Rothschild Zionism, which is it's a bloody secret society and part of the cabal. But uh, the Rothschilds, you know, named after Saturn and all this stuff, they built the Knesset, they built the Supreme Court building, and what they do is that they, they, anyone that challenges Roth, the Rothschilds and Rothschild Zionism and its agenda, they are uh, called anti-Semitic and all this stuff. As this lady says, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, and even bloody uh, Orthodox Jewish rabbis are saying the bloody same. Uh, you don't have to be a Jewish to be a Zionist. That's what Joe Biden said. Absolutely you don't. Most bloody great you know, Zionists in America are Christian bloody Zionists, believe in bloody Armageddon. And you get Orthodox Jews that absolutely uh, uh, oppose Zionism. You know, another Jew against Zionism. I'm Jewish and I want Israel to stop killing Palestinians. Jews against the occupation. These are wonderful Jewish young people that refuse... <laughs> These are... These are wonderful Jewish young people who refuse to serve in the military and do this to Palestinian bloody kids. That's what we need. How many people know that this is going on between Jewish people and Ahmadinejad? Eh? How many people know this is going on? This is the dynamic between a country of 300 plus million and one of less than 8 million. Why? Because the Rothschilds are the, the, the controllers of Israel and they're controllers of the USA and they're different hands on the same bloody body. And it's all this money that's handed by America to Israel, it ain't going to the rank and file Israelis. This is 400,000 people on the streets of, of Israel last year because of their economic situation. Two people at least have set fire to themselves in bloody protest. And what we bloody need so much is for the people uh, of Israel who are being suppressed by their bloody uh, hierarchy come together in common cause with Palestinians and Americans and British and Australians and, and Africans who are being suppressed by their hierarchy. <laughs> and realize that all those hierarchies are the same freaking hierarchy. Let's come together, it's their worst bloody nightmare. This is why America and uh, Israel work as one unit, they're both controlled by the same bloody lot. This is why he won't say a word or any other president when this mayhem and slaughter is going on. What's happening in Palestine is freaking genocide, no other word for it.
genocide, the systematic and widespread extermination or attempted extermination of an entire national, racial, religious or ethnic group. This is Rothschild Zionism, this is Rothschild Zionism, so is bloody this. All the time, Palestinian homes, of, uh, often for generations, bulldozed to uh, make way for these bloody fanatics and these bloody uh, uh, crazies in the military and government. Yeah, we're going to build a war. We want to take the land. No one's going to say anything. This is bloody Israel, called by the Rothschilds. No one says no to the Rothschilds. They know the consequences. Hey, Palestinian ch children's playground. We want it for our war. Genocide. Bloody genocide. This is Palestinian land, the green, in 1946, 1947, 1967. Today, Genocide, the systematic and widespread extermination or attempted extermination of an entire national, racial, religious or ethnic group. This is going on before our eyes. We'd never let it happen again. We're watching it happen again. The bloody Zion, bloody Olympics, new bloody Jerusalem Zion. This is not even about Jewish people and the benefits. They were hung out to dry in bloody Germany. They'll be hung out to dry again whenever it suits these people. That's the bloody thing. The elephant in the living room. And people are terrified of talking about it because all the Anti-Defamation League and these Rothschild fronts jump on you. Anti-Semite, racist. They've tried it with me. But when you're saying we're all, we're all infinite awareness, having an experience, and the genetic space shoot is fucking irrelevant, well, it's very difficult to make it stick. And even if it does, I don't bloody give a shit. So, we have this and we have this, and yet we must be scared of Iran. Personally, I, would say, I think it's more likely we should be scared of America and Britain, myself. Um, Rothschild Zionism want to take us <clears throat> the Rothschilds and Rothschilds, I want to take us into the Third World War. Um, I've been saying this for years. And of course, Armageddon is supposed to come out of the Middle East. Third World War, the, 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 all, it's all about death. Um, these uh, were in very, all, well, all of them were Rothschild Zionists in the project of the New American Century that orchestrated all this country after country takeover. But this guy, Albert Pike, was a high, high Freemason in America. And he wrote a letter, <clears throat> it said, someone say it's a forgery, but, or a fake, well, my God, I tell you what, these fakes and forgeries don't often tell a bloody tale with the hindsight of history that's actually turned out to be true. Um, Albert Pike, letter to Giuseppe Mazzini in 1871, he talked about three world wars coming, so that they, they, and each one would go towards eventually taking over the world. And he talked about the First World War and the Second World War and how the Second World War would create a homeland for what he called political Zionism. Uh, and then he said this about the Third World War. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenteur of the Illuminati, the network, the bloodlines, between the political Zionist, Israel in other words, and leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, because they knew that was coming even then, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, note that, mutually destroy each other. Are you listening, people of Israel? Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, and spiritual, and economical exhaustion. And then he was pointing out that then they would move in and say, we can save everything, but you have to do what we say, and they have to do it the way we say it. And if it becomes a nuclear war, then changing the atmosphere is another a bonus. Very quickly, um, physical control too. Uh, this is the police state. Um, this is the uh, world of Agenda 21 that they want to bring in if we bleed and allow it, and we shouldn't. I mean, in terms of numbers, we, we just, I mean, crikey, it's a no contest. Divide and rule stops us doing it. Um, and, and we've reached at this point in physical control where he has a kill list, which people are then killed without trial or a judicial process or anything. Uh, he can, um, uh, you know, murder people in effect uh, with, without recourse. Um, and uh, you may have seen, and I've seen it all over the world, how the nature of police has changed. I call it recruiting the crazies. What they've been doing for decades now is recruiting law enforcement all around the world, Britain as well, 
not on the basis of whether they can do the job for the benefit of the community, as they used to do, as many of them do, and many of them still try to do it within a system that's a nightmare for them trying. You know, so many decent policemen are leaving, police officers are leaving, because they can't stand the freaking system that's coming in because the crazies are taking it over. And what they've been doing is recruiting on the basis of personality type rather than ability to do the job. And they, the personality types they want are narcissists, a psychological condition characterized by preoccupation, self, lack of empathy, and unconditional deficits in self-esteem, and psychopaths, a, a person with an antisocial personality disorder manifested in aggressive, perverted, criminal, or immoral behavior. And this is the common theme, without empathy or remorse. And that's why you're seeing the change in personality so dramatically in law enforcement around the world. Uh, and, and we get in a situation, this guy, Brandon Raub, all he did was write on his, I think it was his Twitter or one of these social networks, Facebook or whatever, um, uh, uh, about you know, certain things about the, uh, the uh, New World Order and 9-11 he didn't like, gets picked up and taken away to a psychiatric hospital. And he would probably still be there if there wasn't this massive public outcry and uh, help from a, a civil rights organization that sorted him out. Here you go, committing war crimes, happily retired, committing war crimes, wins peace prize, exposing war crimes, considered terrorist. And, and we're seeing all this stuff coming in and all the bloody drones in the sky and all this stuff around in, the, in space and hijacking the internet and the microchipping agenda that's coming in uh, stepping stone style with the uh, electronic uh, uh, tattoo as they call it and stuff and you know using barcodes for babies instead of names and I love this one um, you you take a bloody tablet and it's got a microchip in it stage one patient takes pill and has been uh, modified to contain edible microchip. Two, after pill is swallowed, chip is activated by stomach fluids, sending signal on patch to arm. Four, receiver transmits information to mobile, telling patient when next dose is due and provides other health data. What? <laughs> but you know, you know what the agenda is? The agenda is that people will be drugged and they will be technologically uh, monitored. We, we're looking a little bit further in the future now, but this is the agenda. Um, they will be uh, electronically, uh, technologically monitored to make sure they have the drug. And that is the brave new world of um, suppression by medication. One quick thing before we, we, we move on, I'm just, just about on time. Transhumanism. That transhumanism is so-called enhancing the human form with technology. Or you can be a superman. Well, what is, what is this archontic force? This oncotic force is a cyborg force. It is a robotic force. It doesn't have creative imagination and stuff like we uh, humans have. And what they want to do, just as they're destroying the planet's organic nature, is they want to uh, turn us into them and destroy our creative uh, abilities and to turn us into cyborgs. That's what transhumanism is all about. And so all these different things go into the same thing. Shit Creek. Uh, this has been the paddle stores. And just very quickly, what you, people have been listening to, to today uh, in their various places around the world um, has taken the subliminal into the conscious. And that means that anyone listening to this will, will be far more difficult to manipulate and scam um, after this point, because what has been subliminal has come into the conscious mind. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, some people might have seen this, you know, because it's not, you know, it's, it's around quite a bit. But if you haven't seen it, there are subliminals, very clear subliminals, if you know where they are, in these two pictures. And most people who've not seen them before will not uh, be able to see them, about 95%. Well, for those who can't see them, um, that says sex there. And that says sex there. Now, now I've pointed out where they are. I've taken the subliminal into the conscious mind. From now on, every time you see that picture, the subliminal you couldn't see before will be the first thing you see. And that's what happens when you bring this information to the surface about what's going on. The language of symbols. So. 
And uh, for people that haven't seen those pictures before, there you go. First thing you see. Conscious mind. This is why getting this information to the service is so important. So, very quickly, um, the idea that all that I've talked about in this section alone is being orchestrated by men and women in dark suits around a table is ludicrous. That's just the play out level. It's much deeper in the rabbit hole. We have to believe we have no power. We have to forget that we are infinite consciousness having an experience, so we become one of them. And, you know, I'll say this finally in this section to people who think that you can escape from it by being spiritual and eating organic food and, and meditating and all that. Not knocking any of that, be my guest. But this is what happened to people in China that were doing that, the Falun Gong people. They don't want people to wake up. They don't want people to go into other levels of reality and realize what's bloody going on. So they uh, were uh, being horrifically attacked, abused and slaughtered and, and tortured as a result of simply wanting to be what we would call uh, the, the basic New Age uh, type of life. And so I say to New Agers and people like that, who say, oh, it's negative. Listen, turn round and face it now. While we're still in a situation, we can turn this around or face it then. That's your choice. So, where do we go from here? We bloody awaken.